if you do not understand white supremacy, what it is and how it works, everything else that you do understand will confuse you. In all of these nine areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, anywhere on the planet, minute by minute, day by day, all of the time, all of the time, all of the time. Well, good morning, and welcome to the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and this is the April the 2nd, 2024 edition of today's show, and we are so thrilled that you took your time out of your day to listen to the program so that we can learn more and more. Thank you for listening. Listen, to get in contact with the show, this is the number that you can call, which is uh, 516-453-9921. Make sure that you press the number one button so that uh, you can get in contact with the call screener and give the call screener your name so that I can properly give you an introduction as I come to you. Now, bear in mind, since I make so many mistakes, I might butcher your name, but it's not on purpose. So if you could find it in your heart to forgive me already, I would really appreciate that. Okay, anyway, so you can do that. Now, if you are a first-time caller, and we do encourage you to call in, you do the same thing. But on this occasion, when you do call in, make sure you tell the call screener that you are a first-time caller, and then we have a special program set up specifically for you so that you will be heard. All righty. So you make sure you do that. Okay. Now, the second way that you can get in contact with me is you can uh, contact me via my e- Gmail address, which is the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, M-R-B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. I will get it, and generally I will let you know that I have received it. I have a certain symbol that I give out. And it will be read at a a certain time when the call volume is a little low. And um, we'll have Mr. Fuller respond to your Gmail. So you can do that. And lastly, this is what you can do. You can join the chat room, and I highly encourage you to do that. All you have to do is go to blogtalkradio.com. When you do that, you want to click on where it says Programs. And uh, when you click that menu on, then... A list of shows will come up, and the one that you want is the Produce Justice Show. You click on that, and then the icon or window will open up, and you can join the chat room as Emery Lumumba, hey, Emery, has joined, and Freedom Culture Tech is in the house, and Sat7, you know one day Sat7, I'm going to find out from you how to pronounce your name, but Sat7 is in there. I encourage you to... to, um, to get into the chat room because they do have some interesting information uh, that you can glean. And occasionally I will take something from the chat room and uh, present it. I will formulate my own question, but I'll give you the credit there and give to Mr. Fuller and have Mr. Fuller address that so that we can get some clarity on whatever the subject matter is. So don't be scared. It's all there. Okay. I think that might be it. Oh, yes. Very, very important. Listen, to follow along with the show, because there will be many references to this, you can get the book at ProduceJustice.com. What book are you talking about, Mr. Bobby? I'm talking about Mr. Fuller's book, and it is the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. Mr. Fuller wrote that book. You can get that book, and you will need that book to understand, to help us understand. Now, listen, these are just suggestions that Mr. Fuller has put in this book, and you can get it. There are a few additions, and I'll have Mr. Fuller uh, 
address um, this book later on in the program. I don't know when, but he will address that. And you can get all the information there. Okay, I think that is it, so let's get on with it. Okay, for those who are new to the program and for those who know the routine, let me introduce to some and present to others Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. Mr. Fuller, as customary (laughs) that I do, good morning and how are you this morning? Good morning. I'm still learning. Okay. Still learning. Okay, Mr. Fuller, today being the 2nd of April, 2024, I'm going to ask you this question. For those of you who are new to the program, for those of you who are not, you know that we have a segment that we call the thoughts and expressions on the mind of Neely Fuller, Jr. Mr. Fuller, being the 2nd of March, or rather, the second of April. See, I made a mistake already. The second of April, twenty twenty-four. What is on your mind that you would like to discuss with us? Well, it's been brought to my attention that someone uh, took. Uh, well, someone was displeased. I put it that way. Very, very, very much displeased about me making a statement that I had never read the ISIS papers by Dr. Francis Chris Wilson, even though I have the book, that's the title of the book, the ISIS papers. The keys to the colors. And I never read it. That book. Uh, I have it. It was given to me doc- by Doctor Francis Chris Wilson directly uh, with uh, something, some of the writings in it, and uh, in other words, some type of what you might call a tribute to me uh, that brought the book into fruition or something like that. But uh, I was asked on one of the previous shows uh, or somehow if the subject came up, had I read the ISIS papers by Dr. Francis Chris Wilson. And I said, no, because that's the truth. But then someone, I understand, has gone on the air or contacted somebody. I think they contacted someone uh, associated with this show. And... uh, to let the world know how they saw that and that that was some type of insult or I'd done something incorrect and that they didn't know that and that uh, in finding that out somehow that I'm way off track and, and a lot of a lot of criticism I'll put it that way a lot of criticism from the, from at least one individual and possibly thousands, I don't know, for saying that, and I said it because it's true. And I gave the reason why I hadn't. And, but that didn't alleviate the situation. And uh, so I want to... I want that person to be somehow directly or indirectly in touch with me because that's, if I'm doing something or had done something or by not doing that, not reading her book or saying that I hadn't read her book, then I am somehow way out of line with what 
this program or what I'm supposed to be doing or not doing or something and that I need to be corrected. And if I need to be corrected on anything, I want everyone to feel welcome at any time to straighten me out. Because I always want to do the correct thing, always, without exception. No matter what, what the source is, even some uh, people who violently, you might say, if you want to use that word, disagree with me on everything. Uh, if I'm doing something incorrect, I want to know about it. I want to be the, one of the first people to know about it. And if the person can tell me directly, even more so, particularly on the air, because that's going out all over the world. Neely Fuller didn't read Dr. Francis Wilson's book, The ISIS Papers. Well, if the world needs to know that, and heaven bring calamity down on Neely Fuller, but not doing that, reading Dr. Wilson's book, he needs to know about it, and the whole world needs to know about it, because there's something wrong with him. That's, that seems to be the implication. So mm -hmm. that's what's on my mind today, and okay. I want to know on this program of has anybody gotten in touch with anybody on this program to let me know okay. what was oh, said? Right. Mm -hmm. And if okay. I can be in touch directly with the person who said that, Alrighty. I want that person to be given priority to let yes, me sir. know right now on this yes. program today what yes, the sir. problem is. Okay. Um, okay, uh, let me do it this way. Um, that uh, what you're referring to, Mr. Fuller, and for the whole world that is listening right now, was um, a Gmail sent to me, and I was asked to uh, forward it uh, to you. So what I did is I contacted the people who I should contact and ask, could I or should I read this? over the air because of the strong language that um, this person um, had, had uh, written. And so um, I got confirmation that I, you know, can read the uh, letter. Uh, I'm still hesitant about it because of the strong language. And I'm all in the reason why I, well, that's the other reason that I'm hesitant because as you know, our programs are recorded and people can take things out and make it seem like I said something against you or that there's a feud between you and I. But, uh, you know, there's no feud between you and I. This is what somebody else has said. And out of respect for that person, Mr. Fuller, I'm only going to give the person's last name. I'm not going to give the first name. But you have already given the invitation that if this person, which I'm getting ready to read his Gmail, if this person is listening, he can contact the show or me directly, and you said that you would respond to that even over the air today, uh, being the um, 2nd of April. So I'm going to read it, and, and I want this known as people are recording this. I am not saying this. Please, you know, I'm not saying this. Don't take my voice and use it and... And all this kind of stuff, I'm, I'm giving, I'm saying it out loud right now that I didn't say this. I'm just. Hey, uh, um, I'm just going to give the initials of the person. Uh, S M. You know who you are, and um, you know who you are. So you have an open invitation right now to um contact me or contact the show and as a matter of fact you get you get privilege if you will priority that you can actually be heard today if you call in anyway i'm going to read the uh gmail that was sent to me Whoop, okay 
Let me see here. Uh, okay. Okay, here it goes. Now, remember, this is not Mr. Bobby. Okay. Mr. Bobby, would you please let Fuller know that I am no longer interested in his rambling of white supremacy book? Why in the H should someone pay that high-ass price for one of the worst books ever written on the subject? And he hasn't taken the time to read uh, one of the best books on the subject based on logic by someone who inspired, who was inspired by him. Tell him in your own way, quote, that's, uh, that's effed up, Fuller, in the quote. That's dishonorable to her and to us. F your book. Period. That was sent to me, Mr. Fuller, and I read it with um, permission of those who are have the authority over me. And I did not say certain words that this person wrote. But SM, if you are listening. Uh, you have uh you can call in right now a priority lane has been offered to you so that uh we can uh, Mr. Fuller would like to address your concern over the air because the one thing that that um he and I do not want is confusion so the invitation is open you can call you know the number 516-453 9921 and if I didn't read it right, you can correct me too. <laughs> Cause we, you know, I, I can stand to be corrected. But that is what Mr. Fuller to the rest of the world was speaking of. So now you are in on it. You can have comment if you want. Um, you can do that. Mr. Fuller, did you have any other comments or other things that you want to address beside that before we move on, sir? Uh, yes, I just want to respond, and I want to okay. respond to the person. If They'll come on the air at any time. Uh, you know, you can give them priority because Dr. Wilson helped me to get my book uh, published. But what I want to express is Dr. Wilson has never, ever, and she knew about, she knows about everything that I've said, I think. And she has never had a complaint about me in regards to her doing or saying anything. Not ever. And I used to talk to Dr. Wilson daily, so much so that she said I'd have to give her a rest in calling because I was usually calling her. Okay, and telling her what I thought about different things, and she was taking it all in. But she said she had had to have time to digest some of the things that I was saying. So Dr. Wilson was always right up until her last days welcoming me in a way that, and if she had anything to say that she didn't agree with, she would let me know. She let me. She let me know. She never let me know that or uh, said anything to even hint. I mean, she kind of like gave me her book as an afterthought. She presented me with her book and sort of like an afterthought because she didn't even tell me that she was writing a book. And so we had that kind of interaction. That was how. I was way that we interacted. Uh, we were just on that level. So Dr. Wilson never had a problem with me. So now if a listener has a problem with what how I related to Dr. Wilson, that's blown way out of proportion in, in the way that I'm thinking. I want the listener to know that. I never had a problem with Dr. Wilson, nor she with me. 
that I know about. Now, if she's given information of this type to somebody else, I don't know about that. But I never had a problem with Dr. Wilson, nor she with me, on anything about any one of either one of us writing or speaking or saying anything. Uh, she invited me. She's the, I'm the only person I know of she's in, ever invited me, uh, ever invited, rather, to her seminars to speak. We mm -hmm. used to travel on airlines together, mm -hmm. speaking at the same place. I mean, and she would have set it up for me to be there. So if there's a problem, I don't know about it. Mm -hmm. and I don't think Dr. Wilson knows about it either. But evidently there's a listener who knows some problem, kind of problem that's come up and saying I'm disrespecting Dr. Francis Chris Wilson. Dr. Francis Chris Wilson, she's no longer here. I don't think that she would say that I ever showed her disrespect. And if she ever told somebody else that, that's a bombshell to me. It really is. And I want to get that straight for the yeah. whole world. While I'm still here. See, because all kinds of things are going to be said after I'm gone. Dick yes. Gregory talked a lot about that. He so sure people did. Wait, people will wait, wait, wait. I mean, patiently and gritting their teeth for somebody to die. And then they got a whole lot of things to say. Great revelations. On and on and on. But never said a word while the people were still here. I think a lot of people that happens to uh, people yes, listening right now might know somebody who's like that. I mean, everybody got all this, you know, thousands of things to say. The day that the person died, been waiting on for years to say it, okay, but would not say anything while the person was here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, from a codified viewpoint, I, you know, I usually don't endorse what somebody says or anything like that because that's not code. I just yes, say sir. they said what they said. But I heard, right. that Dick, I, I heard that Dick Gregory said that. He may or may not have said it, but I heard that he said it. Mr. Bobby, I think you just said just now that you heard that, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That Dick mm -hmm. Gregory made that remark. See, because he's gone. Okay, so I don't want to be saying that he said something he didn't say. He didn't work correct. But mm -hmm. you'll be hearing that. I've heard it from a lot of people. Things that, you know, are highly controversial, but the person who was saying all this about the person yes. didn't say it while the person was alive. But the minute they heard the person was dead, they owned the air and everything, and I mean, they're putting it in the newspapers, and they're, yeah, and, th and this person did this and did that, what not. Yes. Say it while the person is here. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Yes, this, this is. Can't. Yes, now that's a part of the code. That's part of the code, yeah. Well, you've this got is, something to say. Say it while the person is here. Now, that goes out for me all over the world mm -hmm. right now. Yes, sir. And yes, so I appreciate is, that person saying that. Exactly. I appreciate I'm, But I'm going to explain now. If there's a problem, I don't know about it. And I don't think Dr. Wilson would say she knows anything about it. Yes, there being a problem okay. with me and her. Yeah. This is um, why a couple of weeks ago, I think it was a couple of programs ago, and I asked people to listen to what uh, Jeremiah A. Wright had to say when he made the speech, Goddamn America, and how uh, it was chopped up to make it seem like he actually said it. He did say that, but it was out of context. The... Um, Supreme, the white supremacists took it out of context and only played the part that they wanted to play, 
which made it seem like he was against the, uh, against the concept of uh, America. I had to be careful about that because, you know, somebody got on me about that uh, last week. But when, but then I asked him to go back and listen to what he said the full nine minutes, and then you would get the full context, which brings me to this point. Before I read uh, SM's uh, uh, Gmail to you, I wanted to make it plain because there are people who will take that, what I said, and make it seem like I said that to you, Mr. Fuller, as a form of disrespect. And see, I didn't do that. I preferred it by saying what I said so that they know that I did not write this. I just repeated it. But it's still, especially with AI out here, people are doing a whole lot of stuff that they should not be doing to garner money or whatever point of view that they want to do. But that's to be expected. Yeah. That's to be expected in a society that is dominated by white supremacy, which is what it's about. Mm-hmm. People don't want this message to get out, so they'll do anything to sabotage that. Okay, let's do this. I'll, I'll tell you what, we're going to take a break now so we can go right in there. You are listening to the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neil Lee Fuller, Jr., and we thank you for listening to today's program. Now, we do sincerely want you to call in, and you can do that by calling 516-453-9921. Make sure you do that. Make sure you give the, your name to the call screener, as Helen B., Darnell, and Wendell have done, if there's many more. Make sure you do that. First-time callers, you dial the same number, but make sure you give the call screener your name so that I can... Uh, pronounce you or, or give you the uh, proper induction that you need to do. Uh, you can also gmail me at the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, M R B O B B Y, at gmail.com. I will get it, I will send you a symbol, and then I will even let you know when I'm going to read that. Yes, I'll do that. And lastly, you can uh, join the chat room. All you have to do is go to blogtalkradio.com. When you get that, click on where it says programs, and the program you want. Is the Produce Justice Show. That's the program you want. You you uh, you get that, and then you are eligible to get in here. And and man, oh man, <laughs> you can see the um, different uh, things that people have to say. And join the chat room as as uh, people have done that. Okay, alrighty. Thank you. I think that's it. Yeah. Oh yeah. The book. Don't forget the book. You can get the book at Produce. Justice.com. Get the book, ProduceJustice.com, and I'll have Mr. Fuller speak about that book, hopefully, in this hour. Okay, you've waited long enough, Helen B., in New York. Helen B., get ready. Let me slide this cursor over here. Okay, this is Helen B. Helen B., let me see if it's working. Yes. Helen B., good morning. You're on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Can you share the full list of books in front of you? Mr. Fuller, yes, the titles. I'll look up the authors later. And can you explain number six on page 254 of the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept? And I'd like to stay on the line, Mr. Bobby. Okay. Wait a minute now. Did you hear that, Mr. Fuller? Uh, the first request is what? What was that? You want the book, Helen? Yeah, the book, the list of books that's in front of him right now. Oh, oh, oh you, you mean the book shelf? Yes, sir. No, 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 I, I, uh, I, I can't even see them because I have a book shelf and it's got, uh, well, I estimate all together with the way they're stacked up and all like that, it's around somewhere between 400 and 500 books. So I, I, I wouldn't have time to read the title of all these books. These are books that I've acquired over uh, 60 or 70 years. So, you know, books just have a way of, if you're a person that likes books, they just stack up. So I would have to set aside a time to write down a number of books that I would recommend 
but there would be so many of them. I mean, you're talking about, and plus books that I don't have. I don't have that book, 1619, uh, that was taken originally from a New York Times, I think, article and whatnot, or a series of articles and whatnot. But if I had it, it would be on that long list of books that I haven't gotten around reading. I mean, I have them, but I haven't read them, like Dr. Wilson's book and the ISIS papers. I just finished talking about that. And, and I've never read her books. And the reason being, I haven't had time. I was too busy talking to Dr. Wilson in person or going to her seminars or, or being invited to speak at her seminars. Uh, she always said that her, her material basically all came from me and my inspiration for doing what she's doing. She said she wouldn't be doing what she's doing if she hadn't met me back in the 1960s, okay? So, but she's written a book, the ISIS papers. Most people say it's, it's a book they swear by. Yeah. But I haven't read it. So when you start talking about the books that I haven't read, it's like, I guess, thinking of Mr. Donald Trump right now, I mean, it's a lot of controversy about books he hadn't read. Hmm. But he's, he's saying that he's very familiar with the Bible. So hmm. that's a book. <laughs> that's a book if you're talking about Neely Fuller now. I am very unfamiliar with the Bible. No, oh, okay. I mm -hmm. mean, boy, as big as that book is, I mean, you know, some people say they know every word and they can yeah. recite it backwards. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's, that should be a wonderful head for a whole lot of excellent yes, information. Okay. Well, okay. Well, Anybody yeah, who's the, read the Bible backwards, I mean, you know. Yeah. I, I do know a guy who's done that named Johnny Jones. But anyway, uh, okay, so you have all those books there. So you, uh, at least uh, I don't know how many hundreds you have there. Um, but what was that on, on page 254? Yeah, uh, yeah, 254 you say, uh, Helen B.? Yes, number six on page 254. I would like for him to explain that. And I, my apologies, I wasn't clear. I was asking about the books that you haven't read, that you had a small list in front of you, I think about 15 books, that you haven't read. I apologize for the, for the confusion. Okay. All righty. Oh, well, really, I wouldn't have time to read them either. I mean, uh, <laughs> and it's hard for me to see, too. See, yeah. I'm kind of getting on up there. That's, that's, that's a... Uh, that's why I set these books aside so that I could, if I could, get to them. Because mm -hmm. they're books of quotes. That would be my priority. Oh, uh, okay. And I recommend that people read any book of just nothing but quotes. Uh, like there's a book that comes out periodically called Bartlett's Famous uh, Quotations or something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. So a lot of people may have heard the title of it. Uh, yeah. So it comes out in, in thick, thick books. And uh -huh. you, you can learn a lot from just reading quotations. Mm -hmm. And okay. even in those books, I mean, the Bible is quoted quite a lot. And the Quran. Mm -hmm. And the writings of Buddha. <laughs> Okay, let me let me bring it back in here, Helen. Uh, just to be clear, line six. Would that is that the? I mean, not line six, but but on number six, it, does that say, "Be willing to make an extra effort to show uh, show white people the uh, that um, you are willing to help them"? Is that the one you're talking about? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, right. Mr. Fuller, on page two fifty four of the. Uh, of the uh, new version, did you do you have that in front of you or? Yeah, I'll try to see if I can see it. 
Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, under re- the revised book. Yeah, and find it. Yeah, find it real fast. Okay. Uh, Two fifty four. Yes, but, sir. Uh, go ahead. You, you can go ahead and say what the question is. Okay. Yeah, she was. It, if she it's wanted short. To, she wanted a deeper explanation, I believe, on number six, where it says, "Be willing to make an extra effort to show white people that you are willing to help them." produce justice, and that you are at all times willing willing to be friends, that's in quotes, uh, be friends is in quotes, with them in all things that are of constructive value in all areas of activity. She wants a deeper explanation on that one. And that's page 254. Two, yeah, 254, uh, number, uh, number six. Number six. Number mm-hmm. six. Yes, sir. Fifty-four. Uh, yeah. Be willing to make. Oh, yes. I think I see that. Okay. Be willing to make an extra effort to show white people that you are willing to help them to produce justice and that you are at all times willing to be friends, quote, unquote, with them in all things that are of constructive value in all areas of activity. And the lady wants an explanation from me. Well, I think that's kind of self-explanatory. I mean exactly that. We're not... I'm not looking for hostility. Well, I got that. I got plenty of hostility from white people. That's what the system of white supremacy is all about. So I'm saying I'm willing to be friends because we're here on this planet together. Rodney King got that correct, and they beat him up. Uh, a lot of people said it was white supremacists who did it, okay, that they deserved that label. Because they beat him because he was black. That's what a lot of people say. But he said, if people remember the Rodney King incident, that they say set off a big riot. But he said, we're all stuck here for a while. He said, we've got to get along. Can we get along, people? Can we? We're all stuck here for a while. Said all this burning and whatnot. Said it's too much smog here already. Talking about Los Angeles. And he said, now, you know, try to just try to get along. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people say that he was probably, you know, out of his mind when he said that. But that's what he said. I saw that when he was being interviewed. And uh, somehow, you know, I saw it on television, if I recall correctly. And we should have no hostility. We're not looking for a way to be madder as white people. We should be looking for a way at all times to have put this thing that everybody's been talking about like forever, going back thousands of years, one word, peace. Peace. Mm-hmm. Peace. That's what we're looking for. So anybody who's trying to say that that's what they're trying to do, even if they're not telling the truth, be willing to listen. Be willing to talk at any time. If white people have anything to say about we we know about this white supremacy thing better than you do, Fuller. So we're going to tell you a way out that we can all work on and show you proof that this is a way out. Mm-hmm. I will be the first in line. I'll be elbowing everybody because I want to be a part of this for sure. I mean, let, let, let's do it. Hey, I'll take my book and throw it in the trash immediately. 
And if we can get this on and get this wrapped up by the end of the year, which is, you know, white people are very efficient. They're proving that. We can wrap it up. I believe mm-hmm. I got confidence that they know how to do it. I'm talking about the white supremacists now. Mm-hmm. Because they put white supremacists together. They know enough about it to take it apart than anybody will ever know in record mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Okay. According to logic. According to logic, yes. Okay. All righty. Helen B., I missed you, but so glad that you called in, and I will keep you on the line. All righty. Um, Mr. Fuller, before we take the next call, do you know anything about uh, or what can we learn about um, uh, the case that Young Thug's RICO case uh, can tell us about uh, Donald Trump with the same, with the same, with the same charge? Uh, Young Thug is in jail, and Donald Trump is not in jail, basically for the same thing, the RICO case. You know anything about that? No. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll just we'll can't just speak on it. Don't don't uh, okay. know about that part of the code. I cannot okay. speak on it because I don't know anything about it. Okay, maybe somebody in the chat can give me some information on that. Okay, why is one in jail and one not in jail? Anyway, I I know why, but anyway, we'll go on to Darnell. Darnell, get ready. You in New York, New York? Okay, here we go. Darnell, let me see. Get this over here. Okay. Okay, Darnell, good morning. You're on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Um, good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Fuller, my, my, my question today is, um, um, according to the call, what are the victims of the system of white supremacy voting for, being that, you know, it's this election season? Well, the question is what? <laughs> What what do the victims of white supremacy vote for? What do the victims of white supremacy? You mean how should victims of white supremacy vote? Wait a minute. Go ahead, Darnell. No, not 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 how they should vote. Or why 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 do we vote? Oh, why, why do, do they vote? need to vote? Mm-hmm. Yes, because. Because the record shows that you get some things from voting, probably not all that you want, but you get something. Uh, I think I addressed this before, something that I learned from someone else, and that's that sergeant uh, when I was in Japan in the 1950s, this black sergeant. He said, a little bit of something is better than a whole lot of nothing. So you get a whole lot of nothing when you don't vote. And a lot of people can attest to that. And I'm not talking about people who have the label of politician. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about scholars, historians, people who have given it a test. Say, now, is voting better than not voting? even when you don't like any of the people who are candidates, not any of them, and a lot of people are saying this now. Find somebody that is the best of a bad bunch, and I've heard a lot of people saying that, and vote based on that principle that I think makes sense, basically. A little bit of something's better than a whole lot of nothing. And that's the best that I can say about that. I know that I vote. Mm-hmm. So, you know, people ask me about that. I do. And it goes way back. Uh, I know I used to sit around and listen to the elderly people in the barber shop. And when I was very young, and I would say, in the place that I call my hometown, I would say to myself, these Negroes 
Well, sitting in here talking about this candidate and that candidate, I said, they're always talking about the next election. And I I gave them a label doing some name calling. I called them next election Negroes. (laughs) I said, they just had an election today. And And they're already talking about the next one. Well, maybe the next one we'll get something. Well, what about mm. the elections that you had today? You voted today. What are you going to get out of the people that you just elected? And they say, well, I don't think it's going to be much, but uh, now the next election will probably be better. <laughs> and, we, and we young people used to sit around and laugh at them. Next election, Negro. Next election. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of these next election, Negroes. Always oh, talking about one of these days. What we're going to get somebody that's going to do something for the colored people. Next <laughs> election, Negroes. I'm sick and tired of listening to them. Yes, but sir. I have become one of them. Why? Because the sergeant was correct. But sir. now I want to add this because it's true. That same sergeant, when I pulled that on him one day, I said, Sergeant, you yourself said that a little bit of something is better than a whole lot of nothing. Hmm. And okay. He, and he said, Fuller, well, you got to think, too. Sometimes a little bit of something is a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> okay. I don't know why, but that reminds me of something you said a long time ago. I don't know the correlation, but you know it's one of my favorite things I ever heard you say. I told you that I love you. Now get out. Mm -hmm. I don't know what (laughs) correlation that has. But anyway, thank you, Darnell from uh, New York. Okay, let's go down to uh, South Carolina. Wendell, get ready. I'm going to put this cursor over there. Get ready, Wendell. Let me see here. Okay. Okay, Wendell, good morning. You're on with Mr. Fuller. All right. Okay, well, uh, I got a quick uh, VGQ and uh, two quick questions, if I may. We got to make it quick because we have a whole lot of people on the line today. Go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, the VGQ, I just wanted to say, Mr. Fuller, you know, I thank you for what you uh, do. You've heard that before, but I really mean that. I thank the creator for you because uh, if I've never... I think about, I'm 42 years old, and I think about the things I hear people say, but I'm saying I would never have any clue what's really going on uh, if I never heard you. I'm just being straight honest, and I, that's that's serious. That's very serious because now uh, uh, I look at things in a different light now. Things kind of opened up, and I've never heard nobody on this earth talk about Things the way you do, and, and but the way you talk about it, if they can understand it, it'll everything will open up straight clear for them. It'll make mm. sense. But mm. that's all I want to say. And, uh, okay. My question is, uh, um, if a if a uh, if if a person saying, "Hey, look," uh, if you ask a question, is anybody being mistreated? Let's say somebody making a policy, and you say, well, anybody being mistreated in this policy? And they say, no, nobody's being mistreated, but they know somebody being mistreated. I mean, what do you do? You just pretty much just go along with the flow because you got to take their word for it? Ask questions. That's the codified way. Just like I'm asking questions about the person that made remarks about me. What's the problem? See, it's four questions. Now, I told Dr. Wilson about uh, those four uh, questions. She said, I'm going to use that one. She immediately said that. <laughs> you know, she said, and what are those four questions that fit any occasion? What do you want me to do? That's what you say to a person on your job or anywhere else. What do you want me to do? Why do you want me to do it? What you want me to do? How do you plan for me to do it? You're telling me, so you must have a plan. 
You want me to do something? What's your plan? I don't have a plan because I don't. I didn't even know that that's what you wanted me to do. So what's your plan for me to do what you want me, what you want me to do, whomever it is? And then the fourth question, what do you expect the constructive result to be? Now, that will fit anywhere, anywhere in the world with anybody that asks those four questions. So you're asking questions. You're turning everything over to the person who says that they know which way to go. So rather than push back on people, because people always look for you to push back, you can't tell me what to do. You don't know nothing. No. No. The code says go with what they're saying, what they are saying. Oh, what do you want me to do, sir or ma'am? What do you want you, not what Noah wants or Moses wants, what do you want me to do? I'm turning me over to you. Uh Uh-huh. Why do you want me to do it? Why do you single me out to do it, what you want to, you know, to do? How do you plan for me to do it? That's the third question. And that fourth question, that's the dynamite question. What do you expect the constructive result to be? If I do what you want done the way you want it done. Page 171, 172 in the revised code book. Yes. It briefly touches on that. Yes. And most people will breathe right through it because the first person you ask those four questions to is yourself. Then you can ask the whole world after that. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. What's your second question, Wendell? Okay. Uh, Second question is you said that nobody can uh, basically produce justice because we're all under the, you know, not under the system of white supremacy. It can't be done. So what would you say to somebody that does good to another person or they do good by another person? if, If that's not justice, okay, what is it? What, like? Is that just doing good? No, I don't. I don't talk about doing good. I don't know what good is. I mean, we got to find that out after we know, uh, according to the code, only the Creator knows what good is. We're completely lost when that thing called good, but the code calls it correction. Do the correct thing. Or do the right thing, and that's that's kind of getting close to that line of doing good, okay? Like Spike Lee says in this movie, and that's on the movie list on on the website too. When you go to producejustice.com. dot com, do the right thing. Because what did the character in Spike Lee's movie by that same name ask, ask the uh, uh, the young fella? played by Spike Lee as the older fellow played by Ossie Davis well what do you want me to do that's a oh, very that's, yeah. yeah called Mookie Mookie yeah. asked him you you call yourself the mayor over here on, in the black neighborhood in the hood and uh, people come to you for advice and all like that uh, so what do you want me to do he said what do I want you to do Say, yeah. Say, so you're supposed to know everything. You're older than I am. Been around longer. What do you want me to do? He said, do the right thing. He said, is that it? Is that it? He said, that's it. Just always do the right thing. Yeah. And really, the code is saying that, too. Yes. The white people and black people, everything going on in Haiti, everything going on in the Ukraine, do the right thing. All right. So now the average person will say, well, what's the, what is the right thing? 
say, now, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you go sit down and think. That's number one, according to the code. Think. Mm-hmm. What is the right thing? Okay. What is All right. right? In the Middle East right now, in what you call the Bible Belt of the entire world, the, the Quran, Judaism, I mean, what's going on right now? Murder. Wholesale. So somebody needs to take advice from Spike Lee, Mr. Spike Lee. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. All righty. All right, Wendell, South Carolina, thank you. Give a shout-out to Don Staley, coach of the Gamecock women in South Carolina. Yeah, they in there, too. All right, Wendell, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh-oh, uh-oh, here he comes. <laughs> the Leaf and Victor and AP and a few others. Hey, listen, when you call in, please give your um, your name to the call screener so that I can uh, get you on here. Okay, here he comes, the man from the yo. Everybody in the whole world knows the yo now. Brother Talif, are you ready? Because here comes your premier, Talif, from Youngstown. Go ahead, brother. Good morning, Mr. Bobby. Yes, Mr. Sir. Fuller. Hope everything is well. It's raining here in the yo, Mr. Bobby. It's been raining yes, since sir. yesterday. Yeah, we got it down here. <clears throat> Go ahead. <laughs> But any, but anyway, Mr. Fuller, um, I do want to ask you something. But I would say to that brother that questioned you about reading uh, <clears throat> uh, Miss Wellsing's book, you know, he could have just came on the show and asked you that question. I don't know the brother, but I would say to him, 90% of the other lawmakers didn't even read what they call Obamacare, but you still voted for him. You just celebrated Easter which we don't think is real, but I'm not going to get into that. So if you want to question Mr. Fuller, there's a long list of things that we've done in the past that we didn't read or understand. It's just like what did Stevie Wonder say? What did he say in his song, Mr. Bobby? If you believe in things you don't understand, then you suffer. Superstition ain't the way. But I'm not going to... <laughs> but I'm not going to get into that right now. My question is... Mr. Fuller, I'm sure you're familiar with Billy Preston, and most of us is old enough for when he made that song, Mr. Bobby, Will It Go Around in Circles? Yeah, yes, sir. And and he even stated, let the bad guy win every once in a while. And I every think I said on the while. show once, I think I asked you one time on the show, Mr. Fuller, why do women like bad boys? But my question is this. Be, Preferencing, and, and the reason I brought up Billy Preston saying, will it go around in circles, is do you feel like sometimes Mr. Bobby, get, I mean, Mr. Fuller giving up? Because every time we come on this show, you always preface it by saying, you know, if you don't understand white supremacy, mm-hmm. racism, and what it is, everything you do else understand will confuse you. And also, um, even Martin Luther King, probably Malcolm X, figured I'm just going to stop because all the questions you get asked, Mr. Fuller, you always go back to the same thing with this gentleman that, did, that, didn't, that didn't agree with you, question and answer. So, so do you think that you're just going around in circles because you're basically telling us to do the same thing all the time? And I want to listen in, and I appreciate the call again, Mr. Bobby. All right, and okay. also one more thing, one more yes, thing sir. for everybody to realize. There was, there was a thing called the Kellogg brand packed in the 1920s since everybody talk about war and it was spelled just like Kellogg but it was B-R-I-A-N-D and which said nations are supposed to resolve conflicts through 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 um, diplomacy and not war and that has not worked out for us yet but Mr. Fuller I, wanted, I want you to answer that question do you think that you just spin it in circles because every time you end the show, you always say people questions and answers. But we still have, but we still ask you the same stuff every time we come on the show. And Mr. Fuller, thank you, and Mr. Bobby, thanks for the call. All right, uh, Talif. Yeah. Okay. Wait a minute. Let me put you there. Wait a minute. Okay. You said it on this show, Mr. Fuller, and you said it on every show. But for those who are new to this program and who didn't hear. 
this introduction that I've always heard you say, and Talif just quoted it uh, basically about uh, what you said at the beginning of the show. For those who do not, do, do not know, Mr. Fuller, would you repeat what you say at every show? If you don't understand, uh, if you don't understand white supremacy, yes. If you don't understand white supremacy, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will confuse you, and that's in the year twenty twenty four. That is the biggest show on earth, you might say. If you don't understand white supremacy, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. You have to understand white supremacy. You won't know all about all the details, but you're going to have to know that much. Otherwise, you're going to be confused about economics. You're going to be confused about education, entertainment, what type of entertainment will get the best results, labor, how that works, the distribution of labor, who will do what type of work, where, when. If you don't understand white supremacy, you're not going to understand anything about labor. Labor unions, people picketing and whatnot. The white supremacists know all about it. Yes. Law, politics, religion. Because white supremacy is the strongest religion that the world has ever experienced. You say white supremacy is a religion? Yes. The strongest religion. What is a religion? A strong belief backed up by action. Now, the white supremacists have a belief in white supremacy, and boy, do they back it up by their actions. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Fuller, to, to Lee's point before we, uh, before we take the break that we have to, uh, he mentioned Billy Preston and going around in circles, and uh, being that you repeat this constantly, all the time, do you feel yourself, if I, if if I'm addressing Talise Croston, that you are sometimes going in circles, being that you have to repeat this constantly all the time in every area of people activity? Well, a person can use that metaphor that I'm going around in circles, but if a circle is what you have to do to make things the way they should be, then go around in circles. Okay. Now, right. That's Sounds the me. That's the right. Okay. You know, the universe goes in circles, and <laughs> somehow it all works some kind of way. It I does, mean, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, people are born and they die. You can call that a circle. Then they're born again. Some people say, and then I guess that's another circle. Okay. Uh, all righty. Well, I got to close out that first hour. So thank you, Mr. Fuller. Thank you, caller. Sorry, we we're just a little bit late. But thank you for listening to the first hour of the Counter Racist Code Show. Uh, but if you are going to be around, stick and stay. Don't go away because we have a second hour of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller coming up next after a seven second break. Alrighty, welcome Black to the second hour of the um, Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Nelly Fuller Jr. And I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and we thank you for tuning in to today's program. This is the second hour, and we would like for you to uh, call in, and you can do that by calling 516-453-9921. Press the number one button. And um, and then wait for the call screener to come on so that uh, you can give the call screener your name. And hopefully I won't mess it up as I have just been given an Egyptian goddess name. 
that I'm going to try to work on pronouncing. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you, you do that, and then that way I can get it in. Hopefully, without making too many mistakes, I can give you the uh, I can give you a proper introduction. That you may also you may ask a question, and uh, if you have a VGQ, a lot of you do, and they are interesting. But just remember that we are really short on time, and we only have a two-hour window. So um, I know you're passionate, especially you, AP. You are really passionate. But I understand you want to get that out and want people to listen and understand. So hopefully we can try to get that in. AP is a regular caller, so we thank him for doing that. Okay, you can also do this. You can Gmail me at the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, M-R-B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. And I will get it, and I will read it if there's a problem with it. That we do have a, a legal situation set up so that uh, I don't get in trouble and you won't get in trouble as we did with the first, uh, as Mr. Fuller addressed the first uh, comment this morning. And we still want that person to call in. He has a, that person has an open line right now, priority to call in. As a matter of fact. That will stand. You can call in any time, my brother, and you know who you are. We already gave you initials. You can call in and address your concern with Mr. Fuller right right now or any time that we are on the air. You can do that because the one thing that we do not want is confusion. And lastly, you can um, you can join the uh, – or rather get into the uh, chat room if I'm not repeating myself because so many things are going in. But all you have to do is go to blogtalkradio.com, and when you do that, then you want to press the uh, icon that says programs. You can press the program icon, and then when that runs through its thing, you want to go, it'll have a menu of shows. And the very show you want is the Produce Justice Show. That's the show you want. That's basically for new listeners, but also for you to get into the chat room and get in there and see what's going on and, and make a and join the chatters. And occasionally there's there's something that may be said in there that that I may use as a question. I'll give you credit for it, but I will formulate the own question. What I'm trying to say is do not ask me to ask Mr. Fuller a question from the chat room. It ain't going to happen, Captain, but uh, I will give you credit for that. Okay? All righty. Books are in, although, uh, wait a minute, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you're ordering books, uh, I understand that they're uh, they're working out a, a little issue, but um, uh, that should be solved hopefully within the week. They're working on that. That's what I was told this morning. So do that. All righty. All righty. I think that's it. Okay. Let's go on to uh, uh, my passionate brother, AP. Get ready, AP. And Victor, get ready. And then Ray, I've got you. Ray, two questions, Ray from Dallas. Yeah, but right now we're going to go to AP. AP, ready? Let me see if I can get this over with, over there. Okay, wait a minute. There we go. AP, good morning. And how are you? What's your question for Mr. Fuller? I'm still learning. Grand Rising yep. fam. Um, Mr. Fuller, I'm going to ask this question real quick and then ask uh, for a comment about it if you have an issue about it or for me to be a little bit clearer uh, about the question. Um, do you think that transgender men should be able to compete against girls and women in sports on any level? Mm. Okay, Mr. Fuller? I haven't thought about it enough, but I always say that uh, what they call, what I call alphabet sexuality. I have a lot of nicknames, you might say, for the whole rainbow sexuality thing. And uh, uh, the main thing that I try to concentrate on is the answer to the question, what's the constructive result? of any particular action taken and what that action is uh, involving the sexuality of people that produces the most constructive results. And that's the way the code tells me I have to approach the entire matter. And that's Anything that comes up, 
what's going to be the constructive result? That's the question. Uh, because different people do different things. I mean, some people call themselves, don't mix me up with the, with, 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 with the bias. I'm trans. And see, I don't understand any of this. The people who are experts on it can do the talking for that. So I just say what the code says for me to say. When you don't know and understand something that's going on, and I don't understand any of it, except what the uh, white supremacists are doing with it, and they are doing a job that's going to give them, give strength to white supremacy. That's why they back it so well. Everything about what they call the rainbow sex when it comes to black people. Now, they have controversies among themselves when it comes to the white supremacists themselves. They go back and forth and all like that. And they get angry about it and et cetera and whatnot. The code says for me, since I don't know what all of these the different categories mean specifically, I can't I, there's no way for me to address it. Because I have asked, particularly among white people. I'm going to ask white, uh, black people. I, I try to get wh uh, white people to speak more on the issue of sexuality more than anything. Because white people, the white supremacists, in my opinion, have taken over black people's sexuality. And in my opinion, now, it may not be true, but I say they have absolute control over it. And, and they only want to take things in one way that's going to give strength to the system of white supremacy. And that's the only angle that I look at. Okay. I, I, I don't look at it from any other angle because I don't even know what angle to start with since I don't know what the, all the categories mean. Uh, there's a new category now, AI sexuality, uh, uh, artificial intelligence. I don't know what that means. Mm. So I constantly ask questions, particularly of white people. I, I put it out there. With each one of the categories and all the new ones that are going to appear. Okay. So, you know, that I think are going to appear if I know how the white supremacists operate. Mm -hmm. yes, I mean, sir. There'll, there'll be dozens of them, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I, I say I want an explanation for each one e each and probably one. a demonstration. Yes. And then okay. tell me what is constructive about it. All righty. What, uh, AP, you had a follow-up on that? I'm sorry. First of all, Mr. Fuller, there's nothing constructive about it. Uh, I'm looking at page um, 341 through 343. But before I, I ask that question, uh, the reason why I'm saying something about it, last week's show, uh, the issue came up about the white male anus. Do you recall? Yes. Yeah. Well, with the gender, with gentrification being a tool in the system of racism, white supremacy, to create chaos and confusion is the reason why I asked you the question about competition, because we see in school this hard pressing from some, say, from the liberals or whatever to give transgenders and the LGBTQ, all those letters, uh, a forum to use for their rights, but it really impedes upon others who don't think or feel that way in, in, in the system of equality, so to speak. So we have issues in school where male athletes, so-called so males, born males, are competing against women. And to me, that's a disadvantage for the women who are competing in any sport on any level. I'm talking about middle school, junior high, high school, college, none on the, on the uh, professional levels because they know that, that unless they can get a, a, uh, some, uh, you know, the public to support that, this is my opinion, the VGQ opinion, I think that 
those males that want to choose to so-called be transgender should be competing against other transgender males. Then that would be equal to not competing against females is the main mm-hmm. reason as to why I asked that question and say okay. that. Yeah. All right, AP. Sounds, thank you. That's, that's very interesting. Okay, thank you, AP. You're welcome. Okay. Um, hmm. That's a very interesting question there. Okay, um, I was going to say something, but it just kind of slipped my mind there. Um, Everybody stay on the line because I have Tracy on the line. Now, Tracy is uh, from Chicago and is the nephew of Dr. Francis Cress Welsing. I'm going to get him in his new caller. Thank you, Tracy. Here we go. Get you on here with uh, Mr. Fuller. Wait a minute, Tracy. Get this cursor over here. Okay, Tracy, you are on the air with Mr. Fuller. Good morning. Well, good morning, gentlemen. I, I hope you can hear me all right. Yes, we can hear you. Go yes, ahead. sir. Please have you. Yes, sir. Well, 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 well firstly, um, because I know the gentleman to your right or to your left, Mr. Bobby, I want to say hi to you because we don't know each other. But, Mr. Fuller, uh, I, I want you to know that that Manasseh uh, Wade, Carl Hutchinson's stepson, he sent me the link this morning that he got from Theatry. And so I've tuned into the program, and Theatry and I have been talking about we should call you and we should say hi to you, and we want you to know that we listen to you, and we are, we're so glad to hear you continuing with your work. Oh, I'm pleased to hear that. Uh, for the audience's sake, uh this is a person I know personally, and he is uh, kin to Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. Uh, I just want the audience to know that. Yes. And I've been knowing and been in contact with him for years. Mm. Okay. Well, well, just so that people can have a have a laugh like I've had a laugh. One time Mr. Fuller was in Chicago. The gentleman that I mentioned, Theatry X Green, sponsored Mr. Fuller for some lectures here in the late 1980s. And Theatry called me one one day and he said, he said, look, Neely wants to see the place that he stayed in Chicago, the Wabash Y. And Theatry said, look, I'll let you use my car if you'll take him there. And Mr. Fuller and I went to see the Wabash Y, and we were talking, and Mr. Fuller said, I remember sitting in your mother's living room in April of 1971. <laughs> and I, I said to myself, I've been hearing this guy since before I turned 12 years old. <laughs> okay. I will be 65 this year, and Mr. Fuller is 30 years my senior, so I'm 65. So if he's 30 years my senior, so I must say that uh, my mother was Frances Welsing's younger sister. Oh, okay. And so my Aunt Frances gave me Mr. Fuller's code book for my 16th birthday. That particular Mm. edition was the code book with a separate section that was notes and quotes. And Mm. so that was my 16th birthday present. All right. so... (laughs) <laughs> That's 49 years ago. So uh, Mr. Fuller's work has been, uh, to say it's been part of my life, uh, sort of like saying my right arm is part uh-huh. of my life. <laughs> hey, hey uh, two questions, Tracy, since you're the nephew. Um, are, you mentioned the word Manassas. Are, are you related to anybody that is from that city called Manassas, Virginia? Is that your family? No, a part no. Of that? Man- Manassas okay. Wade. Manasseh Wade sent me the link this morning that he got from the Audrey screen, and Manasseh okay. Wade is Carl Hutchinson's stepson. Carl Hutchinson okay. was the typist. Mr. Fuller can tell you better than I can. Carl Hutchinson was the typist who put into type, I believe, the second edition of Mr. Fuller's code book. Oh, okay. Okay. He was a physician who was from Chicago, but he worked with uh, my aunt and Mr. Fuller, in the D.C. area back in the 60s, mm. and uh, he was a he was an integral part of the work that they were doing uh, years and years ago. And mm. years later, his stepson got in contact with us and said, "You know, I heard Dr. Welsing mention 
uh, Carl Hutchinson on a, on a lecture, and I couldn't understand, was this possible that she's talking about my stepfather? Hmm. And when NASA got in contact with me, it was actually the year that my Aunt Fran died. It was 2016. Yeah, 2016, yeah. Well, I spoke and with uh, I've been in contact fact. with him ever since then. All right. And he's an, okay. he's an ardent follower of Mr. Fuller's work and uh, a very good backer of, of Mr. Hmm. Fuller's work. Okay. And lastly, um, there's a pr- Mr. Fuller and I have been doing this for quite a while, but we were on another uh, uh, station, talk to him at radio.com. But there was a man that came on, and we always, people refer to him as the extermination man. The last report I got is that he was up in Chicago. I forgot the initials of the radio station, but he he always came on and, and said things about us being exterminated and so forth. And we, I was told he was up in Chicago. I don't know the name of the station, but have you ever heard of him, the extermination man? His prediction. I can so ask forth. around, but okay. I don't know that name. Okay, well, please do ask around, and if you do, you know, call, call me back, and so I can uh, we can try to get in contact with him. But thank you for calling uh, very much, uh, Mr. Fuller. You have a word to say to Tracy before we uh, conclude this call? Yes, I appreciate his contact with me. Okay. Well, look, we we been, appreciate I, your. Yes. Uh, Pardon me. Right please on, go right ahead. And, and and you can contact me. I mean, okay. All righty. Well, uh, thank you again, Tracy. And, and since they've got you down as a new caller, you better not be a stranger. <laughs> thank you very much, well, Tracy. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks very much. And I look forward to, to the rest of the program and hearing you all again soon. All righty. All righty. All righty. That was Tracy from the Chicago, Dr. Francis Crest Welsing's nephew, Good to hear that. Good to hear that. Now I'm just waiting on Jalopy. Okay, anyway. Uh, <laughs> and I'm trying to pronounce this word. Say <laughs> uh, uh Tell me if I got it right there. You know who I'm talking about. Okay, Christopher. We're going to go to Richmond. You ready, Christopher? Let me get this over here. Let's see. There we go. Christopher. Gotcha. Go ahead, bro. Hard. How are you guys? Uh, I have a VGQ and a question. Um, my VGQ is, it seems that the white supremacist tactic is to enter a land, kill the men with direct warfare, rape the women so they can have lighter children, and then teach the remaining children the new version of history where all these actions are justified because of the people's uncivilized behavior, quote-unquote. My question is, do you think that the American copper-colored people were reclassified as black and told that they were from Africa for the purpose of wiping their memory and their ancestors so they could have their land taken? Ms. Fuller? Uh, The question is, the people posing as black... The, the, yeah, so the American copper-colored people that live here today were told that they were black. Do you think that that was just a tactic to remove themselves from to, to remove them from the land by the white supremacists? I think that the white supremacists' uh, objective for anything that they do is to remain in power as white supremacists. People down through the years have asked me, what, 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 what is the goal of the white supremacists? The goal of the white supremacists is to be white supremacists. That's their own, that's their passion, that's their foundation, that's, that's their value system. They don't have a value system outside of that. And what is that system? to look at people who are classified as non-white and say that you are inferior to me and I am to be your master and I am I want the power to do what I want to do with you. I want the power that God has over you. And I have successfully done that and I want to keep that going forever. And you ask the logical question, 
well, that's an objective for existence? And they say, yes. That's the white supremacist doctrine. That's all I exist for. I don't believe in nothing other than that. Mm -hmm. A white supremacist believes in white supremacy. And um, that's what's baffling the people. Mm -hmm. um, that's all. They, they, to them, that's the whole reason for breathing. Yes. They don't have another reason. That's why it's so difficult to get them to turn loose to it. But you see, you te you're asking me, as a white person, to give up everything. I don't have uh, nothing else. That's what I exist for. Yes, sir. It's just to be able to just look at a black person and kick them. And other than that, I don't really, I'm not, I, I just play with things. I don't care mm -hmm. about cruise ships. I do that, I mean, you know, and uh, what else is it? I go fishing. You know, I go hunting. But what I really want to hunt is not animals. I know I can kill them anytime I want to, but mm -hmm. I, want, I don't want, I want to kill some black folks. I don't want to kill them all. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, okay. like an uh, animal reserve. I got yes, an animal sir. reserve. I don't want to kill all the animals. If I kill mm -hmm. all the animals, then what am I going to do with all these rifles? Probably it's the same work. with these black people. I just like to stack up guns, and, and every one that I buy, I'm thinking about, how would this work, killing a black person? How much okay. fun will that be? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Tracy, brought, I mean, um, not Tracy, but Christopher brought up an interesting point, Mr. Fuller. Uh, could it be, and I'm, could it be that that the white supremacists hatched the plan to uh, destroy our memory of of who we are to have us place where we are, so so that they could complete their plan of dominating us because we have no memory of who we are or almost where we came from or told us where we came from. But we don't know. We have no memory, no recollection of that. Could it be that they did that? Sure. Sure. What do we know other than what they tell us? But little by little, I mean, on account of their egos, they will tell us things that we didn't even know. Things yeah. about ourselves. Because they killed off so, so many of the people who know stuff. So many of the black people who know what the real deal is, they're long gone. They're long gone. Yeah, Dick Gregory and look at, and that. Look at artif looking at artifacts and whatnot, we don't know what these artifacts are. The mm -hmm. white supremacists tell us this. Mm -hmm. Okay. They say, you go here, you go there, whatnot. They've been in business a long time. Long time. And they pay Good. attention to detail of mm -hmm. everything. The All white right. supremacists want to know everything. See, they got no problem with education. Yes, sir. Which is what black people have to learn. We have a problem with learning anything. We like to talk about what we already know. Mm -hmm. okay. And then Good put point. it in cement and brag about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rather than Good say, point. like I say, still learning. Still learning. Good That's point, a dangerous Chris. Negro. Huh. Okay. I was going to say, good point, Christopher. That's something that should be considered what you said. Good point. Good, good, good point. Okay. Thank you, Say Shata. I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> Thank you for the affirmation. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a little break, and we'll be black in a minute. You're listening to the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. And we are so delighted that you are listening. And, and I appreciate all your questions and all your VGQs and all that. If you're on the line, hang on. I'm going to try to get to you as quickly as I can. Uh, the books and materials can be uh, ordered at ProduceJustice.com. At ProduceJustice.com. I understand there's a movie list on there and a few other things. A list of other programs on there, but very interesting. But go to producejustice.com for the book that we've been talking about. Okay, let's see here. And yeah, and yeah, yeah. And for those new to the program in the last, this last half hour, call in. Here's the number: 
516-453-9921. Press the number one button so you can get in line, give the call screen your name, and hopefully I can get to you before the uh, hour ends. Yes, hopefully. Okay. All righty. I think that's it for right now. If you hear me saying that word, it's because I'm trying to get this pronunciation down, Pat. So I have to practice that. Say shata. <laughs> I'm working on it. All righty. All righty. Let's go into Dallas. That's where my daughters are at down in Dallas. Go to my man, Two Question Ray. Here we go, Ray. Talk to me, Ray. Yes, good morning. Uh, if you can just leave me on the line, sir, I just want to make sure Mr. Fuller understands my question. Okay. Uh, Mr. Fuller, yeah, thank you, sir. Mr. Fuller, on this planet at this time, whose time and energy is more valuable, non-white people or white people, and why? Oh, time and energy is always valuable to everybody who, who has time and energy. And the why is we're given time and energy in order to do what? Solve problems. Now, how do, what, how did I come, come to that conclusion? Because we've got problems. And the biggest problem on the planet is problems about this thing called racism. It gets in the way of everything that needs to be done that has to do with people being mistreated. That's the biggest enabler, this thing called racism, of people being mistreated according to what? Neely Fuller? No, according to the evidence. So we got to get, to get rid of that. And then we can start working on the overall problems of things like uh, murder and all like that. But you can't, straight, you can't straighten out. You can't stop murder without stopping white supremacy. White supremacy is devoted to murder. They worship murder. You can't have white supremacy without murder. This is why the white supremacists write murder novels and all like that. They worship it. I mean, they, 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 the white code is about glorifying things dying, being here to die, and hasten death for many animals, creatures, people if they run out of dark people or even sometimes just for fun among themselves you got to do a little killing around here you're getting boring really look at it I mean you don't have to take Neely Fuller's word for it don't take Neely Fuller's word ever for anything check it out yourself check it out yeah yeah, see if the, they don't worship murder. Look at, you know, as soon as they make a new discovery, or if they find somebody on a new planet, they make a movie about we're going to kill them as soon as we get there. That's the first order of business. If they don't know what murder is, they're going to find out. Because we're going to kill a bunch of them. Well, you just got here. You don't know nothing about them or nothing like that. We're going to kill them anyway. Mm. Star Wars. Mm -hmm. What do you think that's for, dummy? Mm. We haven't even met the people yet. We don't even know if there are people on that planet. But we're going to have a war with them. (laughs) Wow. Because we're going to see to that. That's what we are about. We love Mm -hmm. death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We love it. We love okay. it. All righty. Um, okay, uh, Mr. Fuller, th- uh, thank you there, two question, Ray. Um, th- this right here, going back to AP's point about this transi- uh, transgender uh, situation here, um, 
you have made that statement, and there, we have new listeners that come in all the time about the uh, white man's anus. Uh, could you? Is the new re- black vagina? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you repeat that for everybody that's new to the program and why that is so? Because that's what the evidence shows. The evidence shows that the white supremacists. I don't use the expression the white man. I just say white supremacists. That's very specific. I'm not talking about just white people in general. I'm talking about those who believe in and who practice white supremacy, and they're the most powerful people on planet Earth in 2024. Okay? And that's what they want, apparently, from what their actions are. And that is... Start at an early age and and get the clergy in on it, too, for sure. Because churches and religions of different types have a lot of influence. Get them in on it. Get all teachers in on it. I mean, real quick, because they teach the young people and get them started. You want You want all teachers, if you can, to be in on it. They actually want to teach it in the classrooms. That, and we're going, we're going to do it in a circuitous way. In other words, we're going to do it like we do most things. We're going to make them think they're doing one thing. There's something according to their agenda. When we got the agenda for all of them, okay, we're going to steer it. But we're going to steer it from behind the screen. So that they won't know that we're doing the one we're steering at all. We're making it look like it's a general population thing when we are in charge of it all. All right? And in order to do what? To better support the system of white supremacy. So what you, we're going to do, we're going to eventually have black females and all non-white females looking at each other and saying, well, we go out every weekend in bunches, six and seven of us girls, like what all females like to call themselves and whatnot, and we all get together, and they say, well, over a period of time, you can't find a black male, you have one illustration, that's worthy of being called a man, and uh, we give birth to them, and they're all dead by the time they're 16 years old, and we ain't got none nowhere. We're not raising any because they don't even stay here long enough to become uh, anything that resembles a man. They're all boys, even when they're 50 and 60 years old. Uh, they're boys. Neely Fuller is just a boy, and he knows it if he's got any sense at all, because in a system of white supremacy, a black male is never a man. And you are subject to the white supremacists. That's the man. In fact, the white female is the man, because she's white in the system of white supremacy. So in the area of sex, the white supremacists now is saying black females might as well just put cement in their vaginas because they're not good for nothing. And they'll just find some way to hug each other and whatnot. They'll just turn say, now, we'll, somebody got to pretend to be a man and we're doing men's jobs and we are the man. Black males don't never say nothing about their daddies. They always saw my, my mama, my grandmother. You know, when, when they win a prize fight or something like that, or run a hundred yards in football, they say, tell, 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 get in touch with my mama. Uh, here's my little mama. You know, this, I want y'all to see my mama here. I got a couple of sisters, but this is my mama. And you say, well, where's the dad in this photograph? Well, uh, uh, 
well, I don't know. Uh, who is he? Where is he? He ain't been around. I mean, he, he took off before I was born, you know. And so all of us know about that if we tell the truth. So that's what the white supremacist has set up. Okay. The black male is nothing. And so the black male, men and black males are saying, being a black male is hard. It's hard. And so I'm going to try being a black female. And the white supremacist says, nah, I got you. Got you. Got you exactly where I want you. And raise any male boys like that, too. So the white male anus is going to be the new black vagina. Because they're all sealed up. We don't need no more of y'all, no way. I mean, you know, we got it all figured out how much we need across any border, okay? We got it all figured out. We don't figure halfway like you Negroes do. Y'all mm. figure halfway or part of the way. Mm. If you're a real white supremacist, you figure everything out for the next 10 trillion years. That black male, all he's looking for is his next paycheck, and he's got to get that from me. Wow. Okay. All right. Let's go to Canada. Victor, Canada, you're on with Mr. Fuller. Good morning, and go ahead. Oh, hi, Mr. Bobby, Mr. Fuller. Um, Mr. Fuller, uh, there was a gentleman that was recently exonerated for 34 years, placed in prison for 34 years, and they recently um, ex- exonerated him. And he spent all this time in prison, and he was falsely accused. I also find myself in a similar position where the white supremacists are making false accusations. So I go into the area of law and I do whatever I can to defend myself. Is this the best course of action? Because I'm using the code. Yes, that's the only way you can. You're in prison already. It's just the way that they act and, you know, the way the white supremacists act, uh, the code calls a greater confinement when they put us in those boxes. See, the black people are in a box. We're born in a box called the planet Earth. But the white supremacists decide who can go where. The white supremacists don't have borders for themselves. All borders are for dark-skinned people among people. They have animal reserves and all like that. Why? Because they are the supreme people on the planet. So they tell black people what is a border, what is Africa, what is Asia, what is Europe, what is a hemisphere. They tell non-white people what everything is. So when they're talking about geographical locations and all like that, the white supremacists don't have borders. (laughs) We make borders. We put up a fence. And, and, And you better not tear it down. That's what they do. We make fences, and we tear down fences. We don't have borders. I'm a white supremacist, I'm a white supremacist female, a white supremacist male. We even set the borders for that. What is a white male? What is a white female? A white male might turn out to be a white female if he wants to be. He can be anything he wants to be and turn black people into whatever it is the white supremacists want them to be. And they'll bow and scrape like they usually do. And when we put them in what they call prisons, that's just greater confinement because they're born in confinement. 
All black people are born in confinement. We are convicted felons when we are born. Convicted before we were conceived. Because you are a criminal for being non-white. You are already a criminal. Neither full of the criminal in the criminal system. If they, somebody asks me, well, you know, have you ever been convicted? The answer is yes. I was convicted before I was born. Well, what was your crime? Being born black? Yeah, being born black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not a crime. I'm a prisoner of war before I was born. Because my mother was a prisoner of war. And my grandmother before that. And all the grandmothers since when? Since the beginning of white supremacy, that's when. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So I hope I answered the question because you know, I'm, 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 I'm notorious for that. You got to watch me. I'll <laughs> slip away from your question that you asked. And if you let me get away with it, the white supremacists will do a job on you so fast you won't know what happened. Okay. Well, with They're that masters mind. at leading you away from questions that you ask. Okay. I want to really make that point right now. The white supremacists, you will ask them a question, and boy, they will take you all around Robin's barn, barn as they say, an old expression, and mm. talk for an hour, or they'll just talk for five minutes. Mm. But they have not answered your question. Have not answered. They are experts at that. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if you let an amateur like Fuller get away with it, you'll get in the habit of doing that if you're not already. Oh. Because huh. black people do not ask questions because we like to pretend that we know everything. Uh huh. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Fuller. I'll just I'll just ask Jalopy. How about that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Really like that story. <laughs> Okay, Corey, Milwaukee, let me get you right quick. Oh, by the way, those who are on the line, please give the call screen of your name so I can get to you in the remaining moments. Okay, Corey, uh, there you go, Corey. You're on with Mr. Fuller. Yeah, there you go, Corey. Hi, it's Mr. Bobby Green, Mr. Fuller. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. F- uh, how are you doing? Mr. Fuller, in a um, in a conversation about racism, um, when a should a white person um, follow the same code as we should follow as black people in terms of not commenting on what a black spokesperson said? So my question is: Should we instruct a white person to say, like you say? This black person said what he or she said instead of trying to debate or dissect the black person's comment. Should the white person who claims to be not racist also follow that code? Yes, if it's the correct thing to do. Uh, oh, oh, you, you can comment, but that, that is what well, an answer to the question straight up. I hadn't thought about it from a white viewpoint because my book is written basically for victims of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. And victims of white supremacy are real quick to get in conflict with each other, which is what this program started off with this morning about uh, Neely Fuller and Dr. Wilson and her book and whatnot. A black person from what I understand, went after me, to use a cliche term. But uh, according to the code, uh, that black person, if he goes according to what I have written, shouldn't do that. He should just simply say, well, Fuller said what he said, whatever he said, you know, or, or did or didn't do. I mean, he said what he said. And if you want to find out about what Neely Fuller's relationship 
is uh, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, and Neely Fuller's still around, ask him. Don't ask me what I think of him and Dr. Wilson. That's between him and Dr. Wilson or whomever y'all want to talk. But, I mean, you know, like anybody on this program, if they say anything about any black person who says anything about anything, the code says for me to say, he said what he said. Say what he said. So, mm-hmm. some, someone asked me some years ago to give me an illustration about something that uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan said. And I said, oh, that's easy. He said what he said. He said, yeah, but what do you think about what he said? I think that he said what he said. I repeat the same thing. See, and I ask all black people to do that. When someone asks you about any other black person, but now if you're talking about white people, you can say whatever you want to say about that. Same same thing. In other words, this is about justice. Mm-hmm. See? If, if someone asks me about Mr. Bobby, I say, you, you know, oh, you want to know about what I think about what Mr. Bobby said on the program that he's on with me? They say, yeah. What do you think about what he said? I think that he said what he said. Exactly. I don't critique Mr. Bobby, and he's on the same program that I'm on. I don't make a critique about the validity or the non-validity. I don't say I agree with him or I disagree with him. No, the best thing to say is he said what he said. Now, if you want an explanation of what he said and all like that, talk to him. There you go. There you go. Don't talk to me. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me about what Minister Farrakhan said and what I think about it. He said what he said. (laughs) He said what he said. And the question is, particularly if you're white, what do you think about what he said? Don't ask me nothing. Or if you ask me, that's the answer. Mm -hmm. The code requires me to say, Minister Farrakhan said what he said. Period. (laughs) What do you think about what he said? I think that he said what he said. (laughs) All right. If you ask me uh, that a thousand years from now, you're going to get the same answer. Same same answer. He said what he said. All right, Corey, thank you so much for uh, tuning in here. Ryan, Buffalo, you're, in the, uh, on the, you're on next coming up. And the person in the 917, I, I don't see your name up here, so get a call screen of your name. Ryan, uh, you're on with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead. Yes, good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. Yes, sir. Freedom Culture Tech. Just a quick VGQ, and I'll be out your way. Okay. Mr. Fuller is on fire this morning. I just want to thank him for pointing out these people and their behavior, their quality, and their religion. They can be white, non-white. I just want to thank him so much for making it a point of his life mission to point out these individuals so we can better protect ourselves in this war. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you. All righty. All righty. Okay, thank you there, Ray. Ryan. Freedom Culture Tech, got you now. Okay, I don't have your name in here, but I'm going to give it a try. Person in the 917, I apologize because I don't have your name, but I'm going to let you slide in there. What is your question for Mr. Fuller? Good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. Yes, sir. Uh, you're on. Yeah, you're please, on. You couldn't. Good morning. Okay. This is good morning. This is Tucson. Um, my question, oh, okay. Mr. Fuller, was yes. My question, Mr. Fuller, was uh, whether or not um, you believe victims of white supremacy uh, when trying to have uh, relationships, um, constructive relationships with one another between a man and a woman. Do you believe that they should be of the same ethnicity, for instance? Do you believe a black woman and a black man uh, should be together versus, let's say, a Hispanic uh, man 
and a black woman or a Hispanic woman or a black man? Or do you, uh, yeah, I'll just let you answer that question. Not so all right. right. Thank you, Mr. Bobby. All right. All right. I'll say what the code says and what logic says. White, non-white. That's it. I don't think Hispanic is a color. I've never been told that there is a Hispanic color. Yellow, red, black, white. Now, basically, these are considered to be colors. Green, purple. I've never seen anybody point to a color and say this is a Hispanic color. That's something I'm completely ignorant about. So a person, anybody in the audience who knows what a Hispanic color is, I've never seen it. I've never heard anybody say that there is a color that is Hispanic. I've heard it being a language. I've heard it being a a so-called country. I've never heard anybody say, or point to, because that's what they have to do with me. Yeah, point to it. Green is green. All right. Mm -hmm. So if you point to it, like I hear the terms black people and brown people. Most black people are brown. So what are we talking about here? Stop and think about it. Think, 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 think. How brown is brown? Light brown. Okay, I've heard people say that. I've heard people say things that are you know, it's not the word brown itself, but they say tan. And you say, well, what does tan look like? You say, well, tan is light brown. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Okay? But in what they call the darkest part of darkest Africa, Central Africa, you see people that you say, well, wait a minute. That guy is stone black. <laughs> but when he goes out there and stands in the sun, he's dark, dark, dark brown. If you've got a sharp eye for colors. So in answer to the question, first of all, when people say Hispanic, and you're talking about color, I don't know what you're talking about. Because I've never seen a Hispanic color. I want everybody to think about that. What is a Hispanic color? And you might bring a person to me who is Delgado. And you say, well, what color is Delgado? And you look at him. <laughs> Got to leave it there, Somebody might Mr. say, look white to me. Yeah. Got to leave it there because we're... The, the stand is running running out of the hourglass. So thank you, mm-hmm. Mr. Fuller. Mm-hmm. Thank you, callers. I mean, as future as future uh, Freedom Culture Tech said, you were on fire today. Thank you for calling in, for sharing, for learning. We're all still learning, but thank you very much. Don't forget, you know, if you need the book, get the book at Produce Justice. Dot com. Review these uh, first two hours of the uh, of the program. Hopefully, something was said um, that uh, you can take under note. And I'm going to apologize if I made any mistakes today, today, which I have. I'm asking you for forgiveness, Mr. Fuller. The final minute goes to you. So there you go, sir. I just want uh, as a note because I think it's important. Dr. Wilson's nephew, that we took up quite a bit of time with, uh, Trace says Lawrence, Trace Lawrence. Yeah. His father was the first astronaut, black astronaut. 
Wow. Okay. Who was killed in a plane crash? Okay. All right. ProduceJustice.com is where you go to get the books. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Fuller, you got the final 10 seconds. That's it. Go to ProduceJustice.com. Okay, thank you, everybody. Robert and everybody else, thank you.